What's up guys, welcome back to the house. Today we are reviewing once again the new Blue Hammer. I'm explaining to you guys the way that you can prepare yours, the way that I'm going to prepare mine from surface to layout, and then how I'm gonna use it to replace my $100,000 bowling ball the purple hammer. I've had a ridiculous amount of success with the purple hammer and over the last couple years I've made over $100,000 with that bowling ball and now with the new rules this is going to be hammer's new option and their answer to the PBA's rules that are changing the urethane game a little bit on the PBA tour. Strike, strike, strike. So that was my like pin up version this is going to be my pin down version I've polished the pin down. I've left a lot of surface on the pin up version of it just to show you guys the difference, kind of what's gonna be best for me and what's gonna match up most like the ball that I've had a ridiculous amount of success with, the Purple Hammer, kind of where it's gonna be closer to that. And I'll show you guys what you can do with yours, um, depending on kind of what you bowl on. Definitely throwing that one in league tonight. I'm probably hitting at the arrows right around 12 with the pin down polished one. It's a little bit of a quicker shape. It's a lot less overall hook. The pin up one being the opposite. It's a little earlier. It's more overall hook. It's a much smoother shape. And these two balls are gonna go head to head right now in, in a one game match while I explain to you guys a little more about where I can use each of these because right now they don't fit the same spot in my bag. So this is gonna be my pin up layout. It's gonna be a 20 by four by 10, I believe. And the surface on it, I hit it with a 360 pad about a week ago, and I've since put about a game or two on it. The surface is blended in, but it is a very, very strong surface. So you're gonna see me playing a little deeper line here, about 15 out to maybe seven, eight. And this, this layout's gonna be much, much weaker. This ball is polished. It is my pinned down version. So the layout for me, it's gonna be 65 by four and three quarters by 55, which would put the ball pretty much right above my bridge, maybe a little off to the left over my ring finger. But um, for a two-hander, this is our version of like a pinned down layout. <laughs> oh. As you can see, much, much less overall hook. Uh, I probably didn't need to throw it that hard and I probably need to step a little bit further left. I've only really put some games on the strong one, haven't really got a chance to use the weak one at all. I'd much rather throw the stronger one, knowing that it's gonna pick up early, knowing that it's gonna hook, than throw my weak one that's a little shinier and sometimes when I miss into the oil, it doesn't quite dig as hard. Also, since we're here, I think we'd like to give a shout out to Eastgate Lanes up in Newton. Uh, just for helping us out, you guys can get a little better look at the ball. All right, I made a two and one left with the ball. The last one just didn't quite shape up. Probably, you know, a little excited, threw a little too hard. So instead of adjusting my speed, I just moved a little left, tried to square up. Give it a little more time to hook. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the pin down polished version. Yeah, I got them like a, probably like a six and three, six and two different where I'm, go I'm also gonna try and play straighter with this one. I'm trying to shape the strong one, and I'm definitely gonna play straighter with the one that's not. Guys, if you like what you're seeing so far, halfway through this video, don't be afraid to click that subscribe button down below and help us because last time I said I was gonna give away some stuff for every 100 subscribers that we reached, and the video got 2,400 subscribers. So I have to sign 24 things and send it out to you guys. I'm not offering the same thing in this video, but it's always appreciated if you hit that subscribe button down below and you haven't already. Let's get back into bowling. That one, obviously being much weaker, need to keep it more in front of me, need to step much further left and play closer to that friction spot just because it's not gonna hook as much. The biggest advantage of the purple hammer, it hooked early, but it didn't stop hooking. So you could move as deep as you want across the lane and just throw it slower and slower to get it to pick up early enough. And it would always continue down lane. That's why it was so revolutionary. That's why it changed the game of bowling and why bowling became once again so urethane friendly because 
you could move across the lane as deep as you want, and I could play fourth arrow with my purple hammer and snap the seven out every time. You would have to play more of a line like the one I'm playing right now with the shiny one where you play straight, you get it close to the gutter, and you use all of the friction to get it to hook back, not the ball hooks on its own and it keeps making that really round shape down lane. I have a purple hammer drilled really weak, and if I shined it up, I feel like it'd be similar to that. It still hooks much more than a black hammer, and it's just a little bit different shape. It's, it only hooks less because it's shiny and because it's drilled weak. It doesn't hook less because the ball is made to do that. It's okay. made to be slow down lane, hook early, and really continue through, continue off of that like mid lane spot. But when you shine it up, it kind of puts a further distance on that reaction starting. Yeah, I threw that one a little hard. Kind of kept throwing in. For the pattern that we have out right now, which is a typical house shot, I want you guys to take a guess which ball you think is gonna win. Just drop it down below in the comments. Let's chat about what layout you would use on a typical house shot if you had to throw this ball. Ay, ay, ay. I gotta shoot that one. Close, but no cigar. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, I threw that last one a little bit left. Polish makes it a little quicker. It's definitely slow down length. What, 266 left with the pin up? 256 left with the pin down? I will say, with the pin down purple hammers, I rarely was able to throw them because I feel like the, the layout that I put on them was kind of counteracting what the ball is supposed to do. Like the ball is supposed to hook early, so I should put a layout on it that's gonna help it hook early, not a layout on it that's gonna almost fight the early hook and kind of counteract what the ball is doing. Pin down balls should store more energy and go further down lane because they flare less, whereas a pin up ball is gonna flare more, tend to roll earlier, and it might hook more overall and make a smoother, earlier shape on the lane. Sharper reaction. More down. <laughs> Pin up. Ball just strikes more. It is hard to throw this ball on the house shot. It was hard to throw my purple hammer on the house shot just because there's so much friction left, so much oil in. Um, you're usually better off with balls that store more energy. Polished, polished balls, quicker balls, pearl balls, reactive balls in general because they don't hook the second the lane. The second the ball touches the lane, it actually gives you some time. I thought, I don't know about all your comments down below yet, I will when I post this video, but I thought the polished pin down would win the game just because it would give me more of that skid flip motion. Um, and it has, it's just not been nice to me so far. That is a mean trip six. I'm telling you, that pin-up one's nasty. And that's exactly what I had with the purple hammer. It was a ball that hooked early, was smooth, but never stopped hooking. And that's what made it so good. That's what made it, for me, a $100,000 bowling ball. Would I pay $100,000 for one? No, because they sell them for like 150. Hey guys, I know you guys are all some string pin haters out there, and I would probably be hating on them too a little bit if we were bowling tournaments on them. But we don't get this high pitch noise on the strength pits. This was a frequent noise at WSU when there weren't strength pits. I got a strike to keep this game close. Woo. If I had one word to describe that ball at the start of the game, it would be misaligned, standing in the wrong spot. I've moved a little further right with the pin down one. I've moved a little further left with this one. 15 with my feet, 
12 with my feet, 13 with my feet with the pin down one. So it's about a two to three board difference, but a wildly different shape. Way smoother, way more control. The other one a little more reactionary, a little more what I'm kind of going to look for in league. And maybe I'll treat you guys on the side channel with a little league review with my blue hammer. But first you got to go subscribe over there. Yeah, I just don't know if that one's going to miss again. Yeah, that one looks like my purple hammer does. It's like smooth, it's early, it controls the pocket. Both balls, I don't think I warmed up enough and I gave them enough time to truly like line up. But now that I'm lined up in the middle of the game, definitely hooks down lane. That is for sure. The th and the thing early in the game was I was too deep throwing it too hard. So it never got the chance to start its hook phase. It never got the chance to start up and to start to hook. Throwing it to the friction now, it wants to hook every time and it wants to hook sharp. That being said, even with the mid game struggles, it's only one hit ahead of this ball. So it's only down 20. Hook. How did that strike? When you got it, you got it. That was in by a lot. I threw it a little fat. I thought that was the one that wasn't gonna hook. That was in the oil. It was a little too much rotation. It was a little fast. You know, all the things that you really don't want to do on the house shot. And that's why you saw the, you know, the crazy strike. What do you, you guys call that strike? I would call it like the can opener. I'd call that the, pack, the Packy Henry. Because that's what, that's what half of them look like. If the five and the 10 were still standing, we'd call it the Matt Helmick. <laughs> The strikes only get worse as the game goes on, my friends. Not my best effort there. It was a touch fast and I rolled it up the back instead of getting a little more around it. With the shiny one, because it wants to hook down lane, I want to help it hook down lane. I'm trying to get a little more rotation. With the surface one, it wants to hook early. I'm trying to help it hook early. I'm trying to get a little more up the back. Now we're, uh, we're striking the tenth away from winning this thing with the pin up ball. And that's the thing with urethane. First off, ding, 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 winner. Second off, I think that's a part of the, it's a part of the urethane thing. I don't send a lot of messenger sevens, but as you saw in the video, I try, I'm more likely to trip a six pin because the shape the ball is making. It doesn't get behind the head pin. It more hooks early and stops. That's more the miss with the urethane. He said, stop trying to put layouts on balls to make them do something that they're not supposed to do. Agreed. Get a ball that does that well. Oh, that's so good. That just sounded like it struck really hard. Somebody said <laughs> that my ball sounds like it hits like a five pound house ball. And you know what I say to that? Sometimes you're right. For you guys, if you're looking to replace your purple hammer that you already have, or you're interested in this one, and you have a urethane ball that you really like, I would drill it the exact same, if anything, maybe a little bit stronger, and I would just put a little more surface on it. So if you really love your purple hammer and it's at a thousand grit, maybe I would put a five or an 800 pad on the new blue hammer, because the reactions are super similar, and if you want it to pick up on the same spot, just hit it with a little more surface. I don't think you need much changing in the layout at all. Did I tell you what Tommy told me? Huh. He told me that he wanted to bowl a one game match on YouTube. If he beats me, I shave my head. If I beat him, he shaves his eyebrows. What do you guys <laughs> think? What a shot. What a shot. And I'm ready. What's up guys? I'm gonna do a lot of testing with these two. Obviously 260 winner, 230 something loser, but I'm gonna do a lot of experimenting with these before the upcoming PBA, PBA tour season to get dialed in. So you guys let us know if you have any questions. We're gonna bring some other players on the side channel and have them kind of experiment with what's going on here. And uh, yeah, you just let us know if you have any questions and hopefully in the next video, we'll answer them.